You're going to open it up just like you would a cylinder. I'm going to go down, then open towards me. Wheel speed's pretty fast. I want this base to be about a quarter of an inch thick so I don't have to trim out a foot ring. And I'm going with a 90 degree wall right now. And whenever you're throwing a bottle, you, you want to make sure you start it off just like a cylinder, so this volcano shape. Go down and make my second pull. Stop just shy of the rim, compress the rim, either with your finger, with your sponge. Next pull. Look at that groove at the bottom. Lift up. So now I've got some of the height established. And now, because when you make a bottle form, you're closing in the neck, so you're not going to be able to get your hand down in there, you're going to shape it in two sections. The lower portion and then the neck, right? So um, if we're talking about this as a figure, you're going to have the foot, the belly, the shoulder, and then the neck will come up. So I'm going to just be shaping from the foot to the belly and then coming in at the shoulder. And with this bottle, I'm going to be going out a little bit. Give it a little bit of a belly there and then pushing in, creating that shoulder. Okay. Then I'm going to finish off the foot. Get the excess water out of the bottom, if there is any, before I close in this neck. Remove the finger marks. So again, I'm just concentrating right now of finishing the bottom half of this bottle, because I'm not going to be able to shape it once I get the neck closed in. So collaring is essentially a kind of squeezing technique like this. And you can use your whole hand like this, or you could use just your fingers. And with the wheel spinning, I'm going to use my fingers here. I'm going to be squeezing the clay and lifting up. Whenever you collar, you're going to get your rim is going to go uneven like this. And so you'll need to use your needle tool and cut it so that it's more even. So again, you approach the spinning pot, never stick your needle tool in and then start spinning the wheel. I'm at a 45 degree angle and I'm slowly, slowly, slowly bringing my needle tool in until it hits my finger. Once it hits my fingertip, I can lift it off and now I've got an even rim again. Okay, I'm collaring a second time here. And again, you'll notice that the the rim here is a little bit uneven, so um, it's not so bad that I, that I can't do another collaring move, so I'll do one more collaring move and then I'll cut it even. But another thing that happens when you collar is you're kind of wrinkling the clay up against itself. And you can see, if you look in close, the, these little wrinkles, it looks kind of like elephant skin or something. Um, so after every time you collar, you really need to pull through and that compresses the clay again. So. Now I can just get my fingertip in here, right? And I get my fingertip down to the shoulder and I'm gonna be shaping just the neck, the space, the bottle. Pulling through, compressing. All right. Now I can cut this rim so it's even again. Um, you may have wondered why I didn't wait till the end to cut the rim to make sure that it was even. Um, and I cut it after that, that initial pull. And the reason why is if the rim is considerably uneven, it can throw off your whole throwing process. So if you keep it even as you go, you're going to have better luck. So now I've finished shaping the top part with my pulls, and I want to finish shaping it with my rib. And I want to make this transition from the belly here to the shoulder a little more clean and crisp. So to do that, I'm going to be using my fingertips on the inside and my metal rib on the outside. And shape the neck. 
bury all these scratch lines from the grog by holding my rib at a closer angle. All right, so that looks, that looks good. So now I've smoothed out this curve so it's a nice continuous curve from the foot, the belly, to the shoulder, and then into the neck.